Hi, it's Fountain here and today I'm going to do a vlog on some differences that I notice between um, the nations as such as Australia and uh, New Zealand and uh, this vlog was requested by some uh, previous viewers of a vlog where I, I talked a little bit about why I moved to Australia and I've lived in New Zealand majority of my life however there were some some things that were kind of hard to to change um, one being weather and the other one being accessibility to local organic tree ripened uh, tropical fruit so besides that and uh, these are just some perspectives that I've uh, noticed within my experience of, of being here in Australia and uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's true for every single person that lives in Australia or in New Zealand um, or even just visits these places and as you all understand when you come to a you know a different land than what you are probably being used to in this current lifetime uh, you will obviously notice some changes and um, some differences in the culture and the land and various other um, aspects of life as well. So, moving on. Um, the I guess the number one thing that I want to point out is the, um, some people might call them First Peoples. Uh, generally here in, in Australia, they would probably be called First Peoples um, of this land. And then obviously the... Um, indigenous peoples of New Zealand um, now they are somewhat different you know some people might know uh, first peoples in Australia as as Aboriginals um, I'm aware that they don't always like being called that term so I prefer not to use that term however uh, some people don't quite understand when um, I'm talking about first peoples of Australia they don't always um, quite associate that those meaning kind of the same same kind of peoples and then obviously uh, in New Zealand um, is the uh, is the Maori and there is slight differences in the culture however they are actually rather connected and uh, I do understand that maybe mainstream history might um, tell you slightly different and that I'm sure will unfold differently as as we progress further and more into proper understandings of um, what we've been doing here on earth and, and where we come from. Um, so that's kind of beside the point of this video. Um, also I'm going to dive into a little bit later on in this video more around the relations between obviously those people that were here pre-European um, style peoples coming over and um, deciding that ju they're just going to to live here on these lands um, so I'll get further into that in the vlog now the next one obviously is more sort of generic things obviously the size of the land above the water um, vastly different between the two however they actually are connected under um, under the water that I guess I'm sure is a vlog for another day uh, climate very different um, New Zealand still has a, a bit of a variety in its climate depending on um, whether you're in mountainous ranges whether you're actually living in a place where the land has had very little interaction with um, human civilization compared to a lot of interaction with human civilization um, the closer you are obviously to the equator or the closer you are to places like Antarctica that will obviously depend um, will vary a lot with the with the climate with Australia I find the uh, climates actually more vastly um, variety if I could say that so obviously in the center there's a lot of desert and then obviously when you go on the outskirts of the land then obviously much closer to the ocean you'll start to notice the forest and then also the different temperatures for you know something like Northern Territory um, Northern Queensland you know North Northern West Australia you know it's vastly different to um, places like Tasmania and Adelaide and um, Victoria so obviously you know things like precipitation and temperature then also the geography is vastly different as well now also population of course um, New Zealand is like one 
fifth potentially size of of Australia when it comes to the current supposed population counts. Um, obviously, New Zealand being a smaller land, um, if there was that many people that live in Australia living in New Zealand, you'd probably notice that quite a lot. Um, obviously, in the centre of Australia, there's very very low densely populated area. Um, so yeah, obviously, the density of the population of humans definitely has a um, an impact on how you see everything around you. So that's that's for sure. <laughs> now I've noticed uh, with Australia, I guess if you know if you want to take something like Sydney or Melbourne, um, the pace of life is uh, much faster than in many places in New Zealand. I mean, Auckland still has somewhat of a uh, faster pace of life, of course, compared to you know somewhere like. Um, the west coast of the of South Island in New Zealand, that's very, um, very different. It's very, um, I would probably say more laid back, um, whereas Australia is a lot more, I guess, you know, caught up in the sort of metropolitan lifestyle. But th that's not to be true across all parts of Australia. There's definitely some very lowly, low, densely populated areas in Australia. The next point I want to talk about is... Um, you know, I don't want to get too much into like polarity, but um, this is somewhat of a polarity that I see plays out a lot, but not always, is um, the kind of extroverted, introverted um, traits of, of people and even of, um, of animals. I won't go too much in the animal side, but um, with people, I do notice that the um, Australian people do tend to be more um, extroverted than than people that live in New Zealand and people in New Zealand do tend to be a bit more introverted than people that live in Australia. And that's not always the case, obviously, um, but I actually really noticed this a lot more when I went um, traveling overseas to other countries and coming across, uh, I guess, like Australian um, backpackers or nomads in New Zealand kind of backpackers and nomads. And to be honest, there's much um, smaller amount of New Zealand people traveling around the world than obviously they are in Australia. So... But yeah, it's definitely something I notice a lot. And um, the Australian people, I do find that sometimes they can be more um, brash or kind of direct. Um, and that's not to say it's a bad thing, but they're, they're just the, the way that they go about things. It's much more um, abrupt. If you could, that's kind of one perspective to have on it. Whereas I find um, people in New Zealand are more, they have a bit more of a, a slower approach or um, a kinder approach not to say that that's a, a better thing than the other but um, I definitely personally prefer um, the more kinder approach and um, but of course I do understand that there is obviously times and necessity for a more direct approach and yeah it's just um, slight nuances in the culture that you probably wouldn't recognize really at all if, if you come from a place outside of um, Australia or New Zealand. Now <laughs> To get more into the monetary, um, economic side of things, um, wages in Australia do tend to be um, more and compared to New Zealand. And the cost of living in New Zealand does actually tend to be a little bit more than the cost of Australia. Um, that's not the case for all kind of day-to-day uh, -day things that people buy. But, you know, you kind of have to bear in mind New Zealand having a smaller, um, smaller land, smaller population, it is much further away from a lot of places so if you want to get things imported in from other places there's not as much of a you know the way the current economic system set up it's not as much of a um, demand for those things so therefore the supply um, tends to be a bit more expensive um so yeah i guess, guess that doesn't sound great for some people who live you know who have or who have that kind of um live in a in a mindset of you know very monetary focused and that's understandable um but with that, you know, they're kind of less, there's like a less disparity between, between um, income levels, if I could say that, in New Zealand. And that kind of creates more of a, a culture where people don't seem to be as separated as much from each other. And they're not as um, focused on um, getting some kind of like monetary possession to validate their their essence or their their status in 
in the community. So not to say that that um, only happens in New Zealand. It's not like that in Australia and, and um, the old vice versa situation scenario doesn't happen the other way around. It's just um, something that I've noticed. And, um, you know, coming from New Zealand, you do tend to notice things more like that as well. But I'm sure if you come from a place where um, the, how would I put it? What the status quo would consider like a third world nation coming to a place like New Zealand, you would obviously still consider New Zealand to be probably much more monetarily focused potentially. Um, but yeah, I really liked in New Zealand how there wasn't that much um, disparity between the income levels and, and what that kind of created. Not to say that it, that it doesn't actually exist. It does, but just not to the degree that I've noticed in, um, in Australia. Um, and I guess a really important thing to get into, to understand obviously where Australia and, and New Zealand are at at this point in time is, um, is really understanding the current sort of recent um, history around, you know, you know, the Australian First Peoples when they came, you know, when they were here and when the European style um, people, you know, arrived as such in, in large numbers, reasonably large numbers. And the story around that and the relations between those people, um, I would consider was even more uncomfortable um, comparing it to um, the Māori people in New Zealand and the European arrival and and um, in reasonably large numbers there and the relations between those people. Now, this is not to say that there wasn't any uncomfortability between between the Māori and and um, those European people. There was a lot of uncomfortability and there was a lot of what we would consider, I guess, unfairness and lack of understanding um, and probably more lack of understanding, obviously, on the European side um, of them not really understanding um, the Morning people. And I guess some would say European people being maybe a bit disconnected of what we're all kind of here um, to do on this earth at this point in time. That's kind of beside the point. Um, <sighs> And in Australia, that was kind of like if you were going to turn the dial up on um, on a speaker, that was like right up. Like I'm not going to go too much into the stories of um, obviously the bloodshed and the sorrow and the grief of that and the relations and um, even now have still a lot more work to do than, than the Māori and the European um, the Europeans and um, yeah I shouldn't go too much into this but it's the things that were allowed to happen still in places in Australia were still you know that were considered quite atrocious really they were, you know, it was still occurring in the, the 70s and 80s in Australia, whereas that kind of behaviour, it wasn't, it almost never really happened in New Zealand to that that degree between the Europeans and the Māori. So, yeah, I'm hoping you're understanding where I'm coming from with this. And, like, the big thing for me, you know, growing up in New Zealand and the biggest thing that I notice, especially when it comes to, you know, being in school and education is language and like even just allowing and even almost ensuring that, you know, te reo Māori was actually taught in schools. You know, it's not something that every Australian school experiences, but it's definitely something that nearly every, I could almost say nearly every New Zealand school experiences. And that just shows you the degree in which the culture, um, and I consider language really important part of culture, just shows you the difference between that. And hence why when you come to New Zealand, you might notice more of the Maori culture um, 
not just with the language, but it just that's an example of how much more New Zealand tries to um, encourage that compared to somewhere like Australia. Now, moving on to the next um, point I want to make is like I, I consider Australia more of like um, more focused on like the pop culture stuff, especially in the metropolitan areas. Um, with New Zealand, it's much more of a focus, I would guess, on something I would call like the outdoor kind of adventure stuff. Now, obviously, you can explore, you can get a lot of outdoor adventure stuff in Australia, and obviously, there's a lot of pop culture still in New Zealand, but it's just um, using that example as a way to kind of show you the differences between that. Like, if you're really into like metropolitan, silly life, you know, do shopping, all that sort of stuff. Australia is probably more of a place you want to go. Maybe you want to go somewhere like Sydney or Melbourne. But if you're really looking for that, like, beautiful outdoor experiences, we don't have to go too far from, you know, the airport or whatever, then, like, New Zealand is much more of a place you, you want to go to experience that. But, uh, you know, I'm living up in Brisbane way. Like, there's a lot of places not that far from the city that are really beautiful to explore um, as well. So... Yes, this is what I would consider a rundown of the main kind of differences between um, those kind of nations. Um, you know, in Australia, like there's hundreds and hundreds of different um, nations, as, you would, as we would call it, um, with the First Peoples. So the word nation um, in the English language is an interesting word to use in that context. Um, but in saying that, they were very much like one people. They had their own laws, L-O-R-E, in which they worked in collaboration together. Obviously, not, it wasn't always, you know, um, rainbows and unicorns, if I can use that term all the time. And the same with New Zealand. They had a lot of their own, they called them kind of like tribes or iwi. And, um, you know, again, working as one, but obviously still having conflict and whatnot every now and then too. And... Um, I also guess I should mention is that the First Peoples in Australia have lived on this land. You know, science might tell you like 100,000 years at the moment, but they've lived here for longer than that, that's all I can say. Whereas um, the Māori in New Zealand, they've lived here for, you know, Science might tell you about a thousand, two thousand years. They may have lived there for a little bit longer, but they definitely weren't the first peoples of New Zealand. I can tell you that, um, that for sure. But science is here to catch up on that, and um, it's exciting times. <laughs> I'm looking forward to um, us remembering all these uh, things about the peoples and, and where we come from. So. Maybe I can share another video on that in another time. Yeah, this is this is all I really wanted to say about this topic. If you've experienced some of these things, we have different perspectives, put them in the comment section down below. Um, if you have any questions, any vlog requests, you're more than welcome to um, you know request them over to me. I'm on a couple of different social media um, platforms, and you'll find them in the description box down below. And I'll see you in the next vlog.